tuned the same, but also the no way to the same challenge the octave higher. So this is like... This is Hi there, my name is Matt Small. I'm the artistic director and founder of Small Art Music Projects in San Francisco. And I'm here with my daughter, Rosie. Hi. And uh, Small Art Music Projects hosts uh, instrumental music workshops for kids and their families. And uh, we feature instruments from all over the world, from all cultures all over the world. And what we're doing with this video series is showing you home simulations of some of those instruments we feature in our workshops. So today we're gonna feature the Mibira, the thumb piano, the kalimba. It goes by different names and it is, here, let's show it to you a little closer. And it is an African instrument from the Southern African country of Zimbabwe. And it's present, it's an ancient instrument. It's been, uh, it's been in African culture for a very long time, uh, hundreds, even maybe thousands of years. And, um, and it has uh, since spread to many different cultures. It's used in many different in uh, instrumental cultures all over the world, um, but it's primarily an African instrument. And, uh, but the concept of the instrument, what it does is, you can see it's a gourd, it's a gourd and there are these metal tines that are attached to a little bridge that's attached to the, the resonating chamber. And so to make a sound, you use your thumb, that's why it's called the thumb piano, and you pluck the metal tines. So there's many different uh, versions of this instrument. Sometimes they're, uh, they have a, sometimes they're tuned in different ways. Um, uh, the tuning of this one is not really specific to a set, uh, set pitches that are recording. You can tune it by changing the bars in and out. Um, but the key thing is it's the sound, it's, it's the metal tines that make the sound through the resonating chamber. And this, uh, shares a lot of, it has a lot of cousins all around the world. Uh, my favorite one is the Fender Rhodes piano, an electric piano where you strike the keys, it actually hits a metal tine that's tuned to the piano, uh, the proper piano intonation. So the Fender Rhodes, um, the glockenspiel, any kind of uh, struck, you know, metal mallet instrument like uh, the, the Balinese gamelan or um, uh, any number of xylophones, well, not so much xylophones, but anything with a metal tine. And it's kind of interesting and specific to like a steel pan. Steel pan drums are fantastic from the Caribbean. And so we just did, we did a, um, a previous video on the glockenspiel and our home simulation for the glockenspiel were these spoons attached to, attached to Tupperware so that we were mimicking a metal tine and we have a spoon attached with tape to a Tupperware. So we have a metal tine attached to a resonator, just like there's a metal tine attached to this resonator for the Mibira. And so if we hit, if we hit this, let's give a little, you can even use a stick to hit the Mibira. Sound there? So we've got some different uh, home simulation here that you can use with the with the the spoons and the Tupperware, okay? And then, um, but uh, this doesn't really mimic so much the sound of the Mibira as well as I wanted to. What actually ended up mimicking the sound of the Mibira, the Mibira, Mibira pretty well were these glass jars, just these simple glass jars with the metal lids. So what's interesting about the Mibira is that the sound of it, it doesn't exactly, it creates kind of a fuzzy pitch. It's a more complicated sound than uh, a glockenspiel or a, or a very clearly pitched instrument when you pluck it. There's, there's more information in that sound. There's not, it's not just a single pitch. There's some other upper harmonics that are specific to, that give this instrument its sound. Like, there's kind of a somewhat fuzziness or multi, multi-tonal aspect to some of these tines and when they're plucked. And so I thought that this, the metal jars, the metal lids of these things, uh, the jars sounded pretty uh, similar. So, so why don't you hit those? Hit you play a little bit, and I'll play a little bit. With my thumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hit hit some so we can hear the sound. Pause. Perfect, perfect, yeah. So these have a little bit more of a more uh, complex sound than just the, the metal spoons on the Tupperware resonators. So um, let's try playing, let's try, now let's try playing something in time. So you can, you can either use the glockenspiel simulation we did, which is the spoons on the, the plastic uh, Tupperware resonators, or you can do these metal jars. And one interesting thing, 
um, I noticed when I was messing around with them, if you tighten the jar, if you make it just a little bit looser, it can kind of change the pitch just a little bit. So you can adjust the pitch within about a half step or so by loosening or tightening the metal jars. Also, I put water in this one. You see that one's filled with water. That one, uh, that change when I, when it was empty, when I filled it with water, it, the, the pitch changed within about a half step. So it wasn't that much of a change, but it did change it. And, um, and the, the key to the sound of the, the metal lids is really just about the resonating note of the metal lids. Um, so let's try playing. Let's do something where you play on the Mubira and then I'll play on the Mubira simulation okay. the jars. are we gonna copy each other? Or just like no, let's just play it every one. Let's play it every one. And let's, but our key, we're gonna try to stay with the metronome. That's our, that's our challenge for you guys at home. If you have, if you can get a metronome or you have a metronome, it's a great tool to be able to practice. It's featured in a lot of our videos and it's a great tool to practice and play along with. And we're not shy about, um, we're not shy about making mistakes on our videos. So if we get off from the metronome, we'll acknowledge that we're off and we'll try to get back on. That's the point of practicing. That's why you practice. So, uh, but we're gonna try to stay on. So let's ingrain the tempo first. Let's hear the tempo. We got it. Okay, why don't you start off and then I'll start going. One, two, three. So what we're doing there, we're just kind of creating some similar sounds. Now with the Mibira, this has about 10 or so times. So there's 10 unique different notes that you can get from the Mibira. But for this, I have six different, six different jars. So we're getting six different tones. And I also have a little metal bowl also. It's making a sound. So that's kind of like a little gong sound in there. And, um, and one cool thing about the setup of the jars is that I'm using just chopsticks to play like my drumsticks. Um, drumsticks obviously have a, have a real professional feel to them. And the point of when you're, when you're working on your drumstick technique, there's a practice pad that you can work with, is that you're practicing, you're trying to get the feel of the, the balance of playing on a real actual drum set or in any kind of percussion instrument. And you can get a similar kind of feel from the, from the chopsticks on these metal jars. I'll give you an example. So um, if you're playing, there's a little bit of bounce to this when you play it. So, And playing the drums is all about trying to control and control and manipulate the bounce off the drum head. And so here, that has a little bit of a very minimal feel, but for a young kid, it's a fun way that you can actually try to get some feel going of what a drum head sort of feels like with just something at home. And if you're doing like even a roll. So that's a cool way for you to kind of practice a little bit of drum set technique here with this. Um, uh, these have, this is kind of the Batman, the old Batman soundtrack. That's a whole tune there. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's our home simulation of the Mabira. Go ahead and play around. Either try to do the Glockenspiel simulation we did with the uh, silverware on the Tupperware, or these metal jars. And the nice thing about the metal jars is they have that more kind of complex tone that the metal tines of the Mubira gets out. That's why I like these. And play around with it. Hope you enjoy exploring that. Thanks so much.